Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play the Stanley Parable. Lazar left off a very interesting analysis of Stanley's role in this game. I can't wait to tell this story to my co-workers, Stanley thought. How amusing they'll find it. Oh, won't we all just laugh and laugh at the time I thought everyone had gone missing? Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's, uh... That's what's gonna happen. Except you've already told us that you already delete them! When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No, I didn't. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. I am curious, because we Stanley saw... Stanley felt lightheaded, butterflies in his stomach, giddy in a way he had never known before. Was it this room? A connection between the two? Could a man love a room? I mean, truly, truly deeply, madly, love. I'm not going to analyze that. To get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. There is something, uh, both mentioned in that museum that we visited, and... I'm curious because he keeps wanting to Stanley show me something. Stanley was so some... bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. Keeps wanting to show me something, and I keep avoiding it. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me. I'm asking for her. Her? Is that that wife you mentioned before? Is that what you were... Stanley, your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. Really? I wonder. Oh, jeez! That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. Sure. That was bright. What the? Oh, Stanley, is that you? Hold on, sweetie. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. I can't move. All right. Okay, there we go. All right, now, I want you to come in and tell me all about... Get your day, What? <laughs> gotcha. Oh, come on. What? Did you actually think you had a loving wife? Who'd want to commit their life to you? I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. Uh. <laughs> Sorry, but you're in my story now. Oh my god. That was actually creepy. Um... See, you're just an asshole. You really are just an entirely gigantic asshole. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Death? Press 8 on your keyboard? Um... I'm okay. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Press... 8. I, I just did, but okay. Look at him there, Wh what the pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. Now he's pushing a button. Now, he's eating lunch. Now, he's going home. Now, he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. I... What? But in his mind, ah. In his mind, he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown. Fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. 
and each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. Um. Okay. And so he began to fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought excited him terribly. Spend time with the boys. So, he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. Well, sure. As he wandered ah! through this fantasy world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. Uh. It was such a wonderful fantasy. And so in his head, he relived it again. And then again. And again. Over and over. Wishing beyond hope that it would never end. That he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path. Mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. Uh, wife? But there is no <laughs> answer. How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets. The more he forgets which life is the real one. Um. And I'm trying to tell him this. That in this world, he can never be anything but an observer. That as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. But I mean, nothing else is going to happen and there's going to be no progress. So... You see? Can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? But you're the one who's... I suppose I can't. Not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time he'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried... Well, that was... really fucking morbid. But I'm noticing a trend here. As was hinted in the, the museum ending, that there's a possibility that this is in fact all in Stanley's head. That in fact Stanley, the body that we're controlling, and the narrator are in fact one. Two aspects of the same... mind. The same perception of reality. There's a lot to be dissected there, especially given the ending where he jumped All out of his the window. Were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. I mean, he went out. Never mind. Actually, literally jumping out the window. Whoa. Things. What? Okay. Wait a minute. Okay. Anyway, I thought things had changed for some reason. Anyway, um. <clears throat> but the ending where the woman found him on the sidewalk, he'd apparently lost his mind in some way. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. 
This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first. Everything just to seems it. to lead to the same conclusion, which is that things must start over again. He says it himself. He's trying to guide us in the direction that he wants us to go in, that he wants us to make the right choice. He's trying to lead the us to freedom. Was grand, majestic, perhaps too majestic, like a combination of a much smaller version and a much larger version of this exact room. It all made Stanley uncomfortable. And he started to bleed a little. This made him smile. At last, proof that he was human. Huh. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. But I remain curious about Stanley something. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. So I've racked up, what, uh, $7,000 already? No, 10,000 plus another 2,000, yeah, 12,000 Look, something. Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. That's true. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. That's a lie. Please. Stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. Yeah, I'm pretty Is sure you're full of shit. Your chance to redeem yourself, to put your work aside, to let her back into your life. She's been waiting. You've been doing nothing but giving me the illusion of choice. And then when I try to follow your path, every time you try to exert exactly how much power you have over my reality. Well. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. But you leave me no options. Only to answer the phone. You know what? I'm not answering that phone. As Stanley picked up the phone, a white light engulfed him, filling him not just with radiance, but with hope. Hope for a life reunited one... Wait. Oh, goodness. Stanley, did you just unplug the phone? Yep. No, that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How did you do that? You actually chose incorrectly. I didn't even know that was possible. Let me double check. No, it's definitely here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his wife, and the two pledge themselves to one another. Music um. comes in, fade to white, roll credits. That's not, not what you showed up me. The phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. How is that even possible? None of these decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't understand. How on earth are you making meaningful choices? What did you... Wait a second. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. How had I not noticed it sooner? You're not Stanley. You're a real person. <laughs> <sighs> I can't believe I was so mistaken. This is why you've been able to make correct and incorrect choices. And to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you've made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. It's as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Yeah. Or did you not grasp the severity of the situation? Well, no. I won't have that kind of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop what? the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision-making in the real world. Please what? observe this helpful instructional video. Choice. It's the best part of being a real person. But if used incorrectly, it can also be the most dangerous. For example, in this scenario, a hypothetical real person named Stephen has a choice. He could spend years helping improve the quality of life for citizens of impoverished third world nations. Or he could systematically set fire to every orphan living in a 30-kilometer radius of his house. Which choice would you make? <laughs> Remember that unlike here, the real world makes sense. And at no time should you make a choice that does not conform to rational logic. If you find yourself speaking with a person who does not make sense, in all likelihood, that person is not real. Allow the person to finish their thought, then provide an excuse why you cannot continue talking. 
turned to a partner and practiced saying, my goodness, is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. My goodness, is it 4.30? I... Wait, I forget the rest of that. Um, but I've got to go for something, I think. Excellent. Making choices on a regular basis is the best part to a healthy decision-making process. Most medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. Do you make more than eight? Yes. No. And finally, if you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant, and this. the feeling should subside. It's At true. this time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video. Okay. Ah, what? welcome back. You may have noticed that this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. But not to worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago and see what the correct thing to do would have been. This way, please. Uh, sure. Uh, by the way, if you, uh, listen carefully, the narrator of that video is also the narrator of this game. These are some of the PowerPoints that were actually used in the meeting room. Maybe I went the right way after all. Maybe not. Okay. Now that we know your choices are meaningful, we can't have you jumping off the platform and dying. Imagine oh. the main character dying senselessly halfway through the story. That story would make no sense at all. We just need to get you home as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction gets any worse. Unfortunately, hmm. it seems this place is not well equipped to deal with reality. <laughs> I don't think reality is well equipped to deal with reality, to be quite frankly. To be quite frank. He has to be an adverb. Okay. So we're being guided back this way. Is that a seam in the floor? Okay. Almost there. You'll take the door on the left, back to the correct ending, the story will have resolution once again, and you'll be home free in the real world. Mm-hmm. Now remember, all you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. Mm -hmm. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. Okay. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Well, I have to be very responsible. I, I, I don't want a narrative deterioration to completely shatter everything, but on the other hand, screw you, narrator. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back in the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. Uh, maybe. Maybe I should be more responsible with my narrative <laughs> deterioration. <laughs> oh... Oh, it's ruined. You, I can't believe, after everything we talked about, that you... My story! You've destroyed my work! Why? For what? What did you get out of that? What did you think was so special about seeing the game undone? Left here like so much garbage. It, well, it's worthless now. And what am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? To know that my story is now incorrect? How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. Oh, I couldn't live that way. Is it better to shut the game down entirely? To willingly destroy all of my work? Oh, I don't know. What's the answer? What do I do? What do I do? What do I... No, I have to. I have to shut the game down. I have to. I have to. Well. Well, uh... What the? Oh. oh up. I'm here. I'm still here. Here in this pile of rubbish. With you. You. Who thought you were so clever. Now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. It was the only thing in the world that was mine, and you've run it into the ground. 
What, did you think that would be funny? You just had to see? Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? Mm -hmm. He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. No, there's that not. That thought hadn't even occurred to you, had it? Yeah. There's a world outside of you. You're a child. Oh, my story. If you'd just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. I worked so hard on it. I tried so hard. I don't... behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Right. Um, maybe, uh, maybe we should do that. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Maybe. I don't think he liked... Coming to a staircase, uh. Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. He's not even going to let us make the bad decision again. Okay. I wonder, is there... is this open? Oh, that's locked. Oh, he really doesn't want us going anywhere else. Oh, this is different. Oh, what's going on Stepping here? Stepping inside his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this until he saw the door with a voice receiver next to it. Surely mm -hmm. behind this door lay all the answers to his questions. And beyond all probability, he knew the passcode. He had seen it on his boss's computer just last week. Night Shark 115. Was this the code to open the door? Would it still work? There was only one way to find out. Stanley I am the had most been trained never to lost. speak up, but now he would draw from within himself the courage to face the unknown. He drew a sharp breath and then spoke the code. What was it? Night Shark 115? Well, well, that didn't work. <clears throat> Stanley spoke the code, Night Shark One One Five. He spoke it into the receiver right there on the wall. A Night Shark One One Five. It's not working. I'm trying. I'm sorry. Is there a problem? No. You didn't mishear me, did you? No. Please speak the code into the receiver. I did. Otherwise, we can't get on with the story. This is a crucial step. I did it twice. Okay, fine. You're not going to do it. But you know what? It's pretty humiliating to bring you this far, only for you to suddenly decide you have better things to do. I asked you for this one single thing for your respect. The kind of respect Stanley shows for his choices. He knows what it means to take a story seriously. If you didn't want to see what I had to show you, then why did you come here? You had a choice, you know. You could have gone through the door on the right. You could have done whatever the hell you wanted over there. Why did you come this way? Speak. Say something to me. Explain yourself, you coward. What? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Um, where? Hey. Hello? Are you... Is everything okay? Stanley, please. I... I need you to make a choice. I need you to walk through the door. Are you listening to me? Can you hear me? Is everything all right? Stanley, this is important. The story needs you. It needs you to make a decision. It cannot exist without you. Do you understand me? Whatever choice you make is just fine. They're both correct. You cannot be wrong here. We can work together. I'll accept whatever you do. I simply need you to take that step forward, please. Choose. Do something. Anything. This is more important than you can ever know. I need this. The story needs it. So, you hear me? Are you there? Are you listening to this? Stanley, are you there? 
okay. It's okay, I can wait. You need time to decide. Time to make sure your choice is correct. That is the best choice. That's all right. I'll wait for you to decide what's the right thing to do. Take as much time as you need. I think we broke the narrator. And that, my friends, is the Stanley Parable. There are some additional endings, but for the most part, I feel that those are the ones that most narratively tell the story. I don't think there's any one right answer as to what's actually going on here. There's the obvious explanation. There's a narrator with omnipotent power of this reality. There's a character that must follow the narrator's just, well, narrative, <laughs> for lack of a better word. But is it truly a separate entity from Stanley? Hmm. He definitely needs Stanley as much as he claims Stanley needs him. We've already covered that, though. Anyway. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the Stanley Parable. I hope that you will play through it yourself and experience all the different nooks and crannies of this game, including the four-hour art ending, although I'm not going to tell you that you have to do that, but it's worth it. Anyway, thank you.